Hey, everybody. Man, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since I've made a video. And uh, just when I get on, we've got all kinds of noise around me. And so, praise God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, I just wanted to pop on. I used to do this all the time, but life has just been so all-consuming. Um, but you know something? God is so good. And, and I just want to give a shout out to Jesus. Because <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. He is my hiding place. He is the secret place that I go and I hide in him. And I got to tell you something, kids. I thought life was great before. Every day it's getting better and better. Is all I can think of is the scripture in Proverbs uh, where it says that the, the path of the just is as a shining light that gets brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. That's the complete day. And you know, let me tell you something. In Genesis, when God created everything and it says, and this was the evening. This was the evening and the morning of the first day. Do you know the Hebrew calendar? Their day begins in the evening. And it ends in the day. And you know, I always thought that that was a picture. Because this life is like the evening. And when Jesus comes in, the light dawns in our hearts. And then our journey is unto that perfect day when we can see clearly. And uh, it just gets better, you know? It gets better and better. And um, you know, when I was sharing the other day on Zoom, I was reading John uh, 16, 33, where it, Jesus said, you know, I tell you these things that you may believe. In me, you'll have peace, but in the world, you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And I just felt led to just look at that word cheer. And it means comfort, courage. And then it's, uh, it has a root. And I went back further to the root. And it says, by transposition. You get this comfort and courage by transposition. Then I looked up the word transposition, and it means to be transposed from one place to another. It's an exchange. And so what Jesus was saying, he was saying, I mean, this is real, kids. This is real. He's like, listen, in the world, you're going to have trouble, but I've made it so you can be transposed from seeing the darkness that you're looking at into this secret place of the Most High God. And when I read that, I'm thinking, do you need any help, love? Oh, okay. Hold on. Hold on, baby. Oh, there you go. Okay. You got it? Let me just get you over there. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I can see, man. That would be rough on the butt. So anyway, um, you know, and I, you just follow me. Jesus said, Jesus said to Nicodemus, he said, you know, unless you're born from above, you can never see what I'm talking about. And then he said to Nicodemus, he said, hey, you know, 
No man has gone up to heaven, save he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man who is in heaven. He was talking about himself. He was talking about the place that he was abiding as he's talking to Nicodemus. And so when Jesus said in John 14, 1, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am ye shall be also. Jesus was talking about going to the cross, divorcing us from our union to sin and death, and uniting us back to the Father. And so when Jesus said, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world, this is what he was talking about. He's talking about, I've made this place for you. It is a place of escape. Remember the scripture that says, um, there's no sin taken you that's not common to all men. And um, with the temptation, uh, the Lord will provide a way of escape. It's not an escape from the problem. It's an escape in the problem. And this is what I am coming to experience in my life, that there is a place in him Amen, kids. Glory to God. This is good news. This is such good news. You know, I a couple of weeks ago, I preached at church. What was it? It was living in the overcoming life. And the icing on the cake of that message was talking about Peter, where Peter talked about how that we have an inheritance reserved in the heavens. Hey, Richie, God bless you, love. Uh, an inheritance in the heavens preserved that's untouchable. It's incorruptible. Nobody can touch it. It's a done deal. My salvation is secure as the throne of God. And, and so this being our reality, when we go through a fiery trial, the trial of our faith is much more precious of that which is of gold. And the fire doesn't destroy the gold. The fire reveals the gold. And so when we are in the fire of affliction, it doesn't destroy our faith. It manifests Jesus Christ in the midst of our trouble. Oh, my goodness. You know, I think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown in the fiery furnace. And they look in and they see a fourth man in the fire. Let me tell you something. God wants us to so experience this salvation that when we're going through trouble and people look, they're going to wonder why you're so happy, why you're so filled with joy. It's we can see Jesus. If we can see, let me tell you, if we can see Jesus in the midst of the storm, I don't care what the contradictory circumstances are, if we can see Jesus, it obliterates whatever is coming against us. Amen? It is glorious. So he said, he says, even though, I don't have my scripture in front of me, so I'm just going to have to wing it. Even though you've never seen Jesus in the flesh, you love him. And you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That joy unspeakable, that unspeakable, it's unutterable. In other words, what you're experiencing is so far greater than you can articulate. And then it says, this is the icing on the cake, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Never understood that. But then when you look up that word receiving, it means to be carried away from harm. And then it all clicks. When you are in a fiery trial and you can see the faith or Jesus Christ in the midst of your contradictory circumstance, you are filled with joy that's inexpressible and you are filled with the glory of God. Listen, what Colossians says, it says, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
It's Christ in you. God wants to manifest his beautiful life in you in the midst of the circumstances. So when you're in a fiery trial and you are actually filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory, what you're seeing is the manifestation of the salvation of your soul. Your whole triune being is being pulled into the God zone and you are experiencing God in the midst of trouble, which is amazing. You know, in Philippians, I think it's 127 or 128, it says, in nothing, nothing, nothing terrified of your adversary, which is an evident token of their perdition, their lostness. But to you, it's of salvation. Paul's saying it here again. When you're in the midst of a fiery affliction and you have every reason to be afraid, and yet, you have joy unspeakable and full of glory. This is just an evident token, not only to you, but to everybody that's watching. You are experiencing the salvation of your soul. You know, Luke said, Jesus said, in patience, you'll possess your soul. You'll own it. In other words, your mind, your will, and your emotion have been pulled into the God zone where you can't do anything but glorify God in the midst of the circumstances because you are experiencing God's salvation. Wow. You know that sozo is to be delivered from the molestation of the enemy. This God zone, this place that I'm talking about, is the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of God's love. And guess what, kids? In love... There is absolutely no fear. You have been delivered from the temporal and you're living in the e eternal. You're not living in the external. You're living in the internal. The kingdom of God is not about what you eat or drink, what you do or you don't do, but it's righteousness. Seeing eye to eye, face to face with your heavenly father. And the result of you seeing what he sees, man, it's peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's all in Christ. And I'm telling you, as these days get darker and darker, I want you to know there is a place of escape. And it's in Jesus. He is truly my Savior. He's saving me every day. Hallelujah. And sometimes when things get rough, I just escape into the reality of the kingdom of God when nothing can touch me, nothing can harm me. Listen, I'm eternal. I have eternal life dwelling on the inside of me. And there ain't nothing in this world or any other world that can take it away from me. Jesus says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen, John. Isn't it glorious? I am so excited about this glorious salvation. Pray for me uh, that my life will um, uh, allow me to spend more time teaching and uh, sharing the wonderful truth. Amen. Because I tell you, you know, the scripture says in the Psalms, the name of the Lord. I mean, you know what it used to be like? Scripture. But now, when I say it, it's my living reality. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. What is the name of the Lord? It is everything that a name represents. What does the name of the Lord represent to me? The name of the Lord, number one, is Jesus. Yahweh, Jehovah, Jehovah, Je Jesus means Jehovah saves, okay? He's real, man, and all the power that that name represents. He's solid, he's faithful, he's able. And, and when people, it says the righteous, 
the righteous, those that can see about themselves as God sees them. I'm a child of God, and my heavenly Father desires to protect me from the onslaught of the enemy. And so when I see trouble coming, baby, I run into that strong tower, and he saves me. What does the 91st Psalm say? It says, um, oh, what does it say? You'll be safe. He that abides in the secret place of the Most High God shall be safe from the fear of evil. Amen. Jesus provided this place for us, man. And it's got to become our reality. I am just so, so thankful. Uh, the, the last few weeks have, have been a wonderful time for me. Although circumstances have not been kind, it doesn't make any difference. But the revelation of God has been so much greater. And, and it's like when um, Paul said in uh, Corinthians 12, when he sought the Lord to take away this thorn in the flesh, and I, I definitely believe that that thorn in the flesh was a Judaizer that was persecuting him and undoing all the work that Paul was doing. And, and Paul had had it up to here. And Paul did not have the revelation that he had in Philippians where he said that I have learned to be content in all things. I have been instructed, whether I'm abased or abound, to therewith be content. That word instructed means to be initiated into the mystery. To be initiated into the mystery. To come to know something that the general Joe Blow don't know. He came to learn the mystery. And after that, he had it made in the shade. And I believe he got that revelation at this time in Corinthians 12, where he sought the Lord three times to take this thing away. In Paul's mind, listen, I cannot have a happy life if this thing stays here. You gotta take it away. But then the Lord said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength, is made perfect in your weakness. And he got it. He understood. And his response was, I therefore will glory in my infirmities. I will rejoice in my weaknesses. For when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Listen, a sure sign you don't know what I'm talking about is if you want to be strong. If you want to be strong in yourself, you, don't, you, you haven't been initiated into the mystery. Because the mystery is, hey, what did Isaiah say? Let the weak say, I am strong. So when you're weak, that's when, when God shows up. He says, I'll rejoice in my infirmities and glory in my weaknesses. For that's when the glory of Christ rests upon me. The glory of Christ tents over me. Oh, man, let me tell you, you don't have that experience unless you're pushed against the wall and you ain't got nothing you can do. Then Jesus comes and saves. Hallelujah. This is good stuff, you know. Listen to this. If you can see what God sees, you're good. <laughs> if you can see what God sees, you're good. Zephaniah 3, 17 says that he rejoices over you with singing. And he rests in his love for you. Remember Jesus said, enter into the joy of the Lord. And Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you could see right now, whatever situation you're in, if you could see the Holy Trinity rejoicing over you in their love and just speaking wonderful things over you, that would eclipse anything that's going on in your life. You could care less. 
If you could see that, heaven has come to earth and you are experiencing heaven on earth. I'll tell you, when everything looks really dark on the outside and you can come to this place of resting in his love for you, it's like there is no fear. He obliterates it. And I said the other day, I said, you know, I come to realize that God created us in love. He created us because he loved us. He takes care of us because he loves us. And then we were created in love and then Adam, the federal head of the human race, plunged the whole world into darkness and nobody could see how much their heavenly father loved us. And it took Jesus coming from heaven and bringing his light into this earth and dying away our union to sin and death that we might be joined to the Father again and live in this divine union and this wonderful place. Hello. Hey! And it is just so absolutely wonderful. And I realized that, remember the scripture that I, I shared in Peter 1, I think it's 9, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Receiving, that word receiving is to, to be carried away from harm. The end of your faith, that word end means the point aimed at or the goal. What is the goal of all faith and persuasion? What is our Heavenly Father trying to persuade us of? He's trying to persuade us of His great love. And when you, when you receive the end of your faith, the point aimed at, which is love, I think it's 1 Timothy 1, 1 5, it's 5 or 6, it says, the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. The end of all instruction is to bring us back to love. And when you're brought back to his perfect love, not that you love perfectly, but that he loves you perfectly, it will obliterate all fear in your life. And you will not have a care in the world you can live a life just like Jesus lived, knowing his father would take care of him. Isn't this such good news? Well, I've enjoyed pouring out my heart to you. You guys have a blessed day and uh, meditate on these good words. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.